Hello everybody, this is John. Welcome to the NCGA Mershman Seeds Ag Weather Outlook for June 24th, 2017. Well, you know, I've been looking at the past precipitation in a lot of detail and the Western Corn Belt, some areas I've been really talking about having been dry so far this entire season, such as North and South Dakota. But if you look at Nebraska now and other areas, now that area is getting unusually dry as well. So we want to focus on that. There has been a change in the weather pattern. It's brought unusually cool and dry weather over most of the area. And oftentimes this type of pattern is also fairly quiet, but not necessarily. So my question is, where is the hot summer weather? Just have not seen that sign of it over most areas, or at least not sustained. We've had some hot periods, but it's not been a stable pattern that's been over the region for a long time. So for the last seven days, here's the precipitation. You know, we did get some um, precipitation from Cindy. It, you can see it here. You can sort of track it. It came in from the North Gulf Coast. It spread up into the Ohio, um, the Eastern Corn Belt, the Ohio River Valley. Areas in yellow got over two inches of rain. So that was a pretty soaking rain over Ohio, parts of Indiana. And then as we got further west, really not much at all. Very quiet over the Central Corn Belt. A couple little pockets of heavy rainfall here and there. But look at the Western Corn Belt again. North Dakota, most of South Dakota, most of Kansas, most of um, Nebraska, and most of Kansas here. Little precipitation, if any, over the last seven days. But I think we see it more if we go back even a little bit further. Here's the past 30 days, all the way from Oklahoma up to North Dakota, and now even western Iowa and Missouri are showing up as far as two inches or more uh, below normal precipitation. That red is actually four inches or more, and the darker shades of uh, orange there or brown, that's three inches or more. So I think it's fair to say that the western Corn Belt and even parts of the central could use additional rain. You can see that in the standardized precipitation index here. This is indicating um, it's a calculation of rainfall. The red is indicating two to three inches of rain is needed in these areas. So while parts of the central and eastern Corn Belt are doing pretty good, the western certainly is not, and we need additional precipitation. Now, over the last week, you can see that cooler air started pushing in. This is an average, so you don't really see it there. You can see that green, and that's three degrees below normal. That pushed down further south as we went through the week. So really, the big story right now, very strong pattern change here. We have this big dip in the jet stream aloft right smack over the Great Lakes into the Midwest, and that's resulting in a very widespread area of below normal temperatures over the next five days um, over almost the entire Corn Belt. This is cool air, and this is dry air. So when we look at precipitation over the next five days, what we're going to see is we're going to see several more fronts that come through. They sort of reinforce the cool air, and each one could provide some precipitation. Now, this is very scattered, but I think it does show that the eastern Corn Belt and, again, the western, not much precipitation, just some scattered areas over the Great Lakes, perhaps parts of the upper Midwest, a scattered precipitation pattern but most areas a pretty quiet week. Now I just put five days because when you get in six and seven, right now there is a stronger system, an area of low pressure pushing through that could enhance rainfall during days six and seven. Um, still in the same area, you can sort of st see that most of the Eastern Corn Belt and most of the West doesn't get this. Um, it'd be nice if some of this pulled a little bit further West, but this is out there and I don't get too excited about exact amounts and position in summertime seven days out. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Then as we get into the six to 10 day range, what do we notice here? Well, that upper trough, that dip in the jet stream is still there. The mean position is still there, but it's not nearly as deep. So what do you think that's gonna do? Well, that's going to moderate those temperatures a bit to either near normal or a bit below normal. Bit below normal is that blue over the area. So when we go out through 10 days, still no sign of excessive heat. If anything, it's going from unusually cool to either near or a bit cooler than normal. Then finally, as we get into the 11 to 15 day range, we see that ridge beginning to reassert itself, but it's doing so over the western uh, areas, over the inner mountain region. So that again shows that that's where the heat is. So let's summarize temperatures. Next 15 days, well, most of the Corn Belt 
I do not see heat, um, if anything, normal or below normal temperatures through the next 15 days. Now, an exception could be late in the period, 11 to 15 over the western Corn Belt. That's when that heat should be building again. But over the central and east, just don't see signs of it right into the early part of July. Now, I think precipitation is going to be a little bit trickier. Here is a precipitation anomaly for week one. I think it's a bit overdone, but overall you can see the eastern Corn Belt, yellow means below normal, not much over the far northwest as well. Let's hope some of this expands a little bit further west. We could get some needed precipitation over parts of Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. I don't think it's going to be over that entire area, but we'll have to see. And then here's week two. Well, let's again keep our fingers crossed. This could bring some needed rain in some areas, but again, it does not look to me like it's going to be in all areas. And I think you can see that in the soil moisture change here where just pockets here and there. So here you can see parts of Nebraska still drying soils, other spots increasing soils. Right now it looks like perhaps Iowa has the best shot of getting some increasing soil moisture over the next week to 10 days. Now if you haven't tried out the Weather Decisions Planner, give it a try. Here is the link you can go to and I know a number of people have signed up for it. It gives you a real precise daily briefing of what's going on and this should help make your short-term planning. So it sort of fills in between my briefings and uh, my content. So again, the takeaway points, below normal temperatures into July, moderating as we get towards the early part of July, but at least most of that time below normal. Not much relief the western Corn Belt from the dry conditions, but there could be some rain in spots that could help. That's the briefing. If you have any questions, john at bluewateroutlook.com, and um, hope you all have a good week.